Nature has humbled us throughout the ages. At any moment, in any place, a natural disaster can strike. The cost can be the ultimate, the loss of life, or to a much lesser extent, the loss of lifestyle. During these times, more and more people are turning to generators for a semblance of comfort during major power outages. During the next few minutes, a look at portable and standby generators and how to utilize them safely. There are two basic types of generators, portable and standby. Portable generators are designed to supply auxiliary power to specific appliances and equipment, primarily using extension cords. Most of these types of generators are mobile and fueled by gasoline. Standby generators are hardwired to the home's electrical system and automatically operate when a power disruption occurs. Standby generators are usually powered by LP or natural gas. Smaller scale standby generators can be the commercial variety purchased for several thousand dollars at home centers or industrial varieties which can cost upward to five times the amount of a commercial generator but can also power more appliances. Manufacturers rate the strength of a generator in terms of wattage. Choosing the size or wattage of the generator needed for your home should be determined after deciding which appliances and equipment you want powered during an emergency situation. Determine all of the appliances that you want the generator to operate beforehand. Then determine both the starting wattage and the running wattage requirements of those appliances. The starting load may only last a few seconds, but it's still very important when calculating the total wattage used. Your generator must be rated to handle the total wattage, including the startup load. Never exceed the rated capacity of your generator. Overloading the generator can cause serious damage to the unit and to the appliances connected to it. Also, keep in mind that if you're using a portable generator, it's not designed to operate continuously. So during emergency situations, it's better to run the generator for a few hours and then shut it off for a period of time. This will help you conserve gas and propane and the life expectancy of your generator. Once you've purchased your generator, it's important to connect it properly and safely. The first step is to be sure to read and follow all of the manufacturer's operating guidelines. Whether you've purchased a portable or standby generator, it's extremely important to make sure it's grounded properly. Portable generators usually come equipped with an internal ground, but standby generators must be grounded properly to an external ground. Grounding is relatively simple. Your owner's manual will usually tell you to attach a number six copper wire running from the generator to a residential ground. But regardless, make sure the unit is properly grounded before attempting to operate it. If you've purchased a portable generator, you have a couple of choices still to make. You can choose to power select appliances by utilizing extension cords that plug directly into the generator. If you're using extension cords, make sure they are three plug extension cords that are properly sized to handle the electric requirements of the appliances. Or you can hire a certified electrician to hardwire the unit directly into a transfer switch attached to the home's main circuit panel. Transfer switches are simple in design but extremely important during an emergency situation. The switch brings both the utility's power and the generator's power into the same circuit box, but it only allows one source to be connected to the residential load. The transfer switch also keeps power being supplied by the generator from backfeeding through your main breaker panel, out through your home service drop, to a transformer in your vicinity, where it's stepped up to 7,200 or 14,400 volts and sent into the utility's distribution system. Lines in the area which are supposedly dead are now re-energized and pose a very serious risk to linemen in the vicinity working to restore power. All transfer switches are not created equally. Look for switches that are listed as UL1800. The UL label must specifically state that the unit is an automatic transfer switch, a transfer and bypass isolation switch, or a non-automatic transfer switch. If the switch is not labeled this way, it is not complied with the UL1800 rating, but rather a far less rigorous UL standard. A new type of switch available for portable generators is the meter-based transfer switch. 
This unit plugs directly into an electric meter can and allows operation of any circuits in the home up to the capacity of the switch and the generator. The customer controls the load. And keep this thought in mind. It's more economical to purchase a small window air conditioning unit to provide comfort to one room during emergency situations than it is to purchase a generator large enough to power a whole house central air conditioning system. Many people think of generators as just another home appliance. The refrigerator is safe, the TV is safe, the new generator must be also. But generators are different. If you own a portable generator, it's usually powered by some sort of fuel. When fuel-powered engines are running, they give off carbon monoxide, an odorless but deadly gas. So never run your portable generator in an enclosed or partially enclosed space. Find a spot outside that is well ventilated and away from doors, windows, and vents that run into your home. Keep in mind that opening windows and doors may not prevent carbon monoxide from building up in an enclosed area. The exhaust on the generator can get extremely hot and potentially start a fire. So again, be aware of where you choose to situate your portable generator. Before refueling it, turn it off and let it cool down. Also, never store fuel for your generator in the home or near fuel burning appliances such as a gas water heater. Store fuels outside of living areas in properly labeled safety containers. To avoid shock or electrocution, keep your generator dry and situated on a dry surface under an open canopy style structure. Remember to dry your hands before touching a generator. And as we've mentioned before, if you're using a portable generator, plug appliances directly into it using a heavy duty three pronged grounded extension cord that is free of cuts or tears. Never plug the generator into a wall unit or wire it into your main breaker circuit. And finally, a few words on maintaining your generator when it's not in use. Ethanol added gasoline can corrode parts if it's left to sit in an engine for long periods of time. Yet if you drain that gas and leave the engine empty, the O-rings can dry out and cause the gas tank to leak. To avoid these potential problems, use a fuel stabilizer and make it a habit to run your generator for 10 minutes or so each month. There's no such thing as too much safety when you're dealing with electricity. And the same applies for generators. Know and follow the guidelines just outlined to keep you and your family safe when the next natural disaster strikes.